Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 16 to 20 of the Algebra 2 Trigonometry Regions exam for 2015. All right, let's take a look at problem number 16. It says, what is the product of the third root of 4a squared b to the fourth and the third root of 16a to the third b squared? So one thing you want to note is that whenever you're multiplying exponents of the same base, you add the exponents. You basically add the powers, okay? These are the steps we're going to use for this problem. First of all, we're going to combine these two radicals since they have the same root, which is 3. And then we're going to combine terms with identical exponents. You can multiply constants since they have an exponent of 0, okay? So we're going to combine them using um, the product property of exponents. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We have the third root <coughs> of 4a squared b to the fourth times the third root of <coughs> 16a to the third b squared. Now, since they have identical roots, I can combine them into one. I'll just have the third root of the product of the radicands, okay? So it's going to be that times we have <coughs> 4 times 16. Notice I'm, I, I'm placing the constants next to each other times the a's, the exponents with a as basis, a squared times a to the third times the b's, b to the fourth times b to the second power. Now I'm going to use the product property of exponents to combine um, these two variable terms right here. And then I will uh, multiply these two, okay? So we're going to have the third root of 4 times 16 is 64. And then a squared times a to the third, you just basically add the power. So it will be a to the 2 plus 3 and then b to the 4 plus 2, okay? So that will be our um, radicand right there. Now let's go ahead and um, simplify that. We're going to have the third root of um, 64, 64a to the 5, b to the 6th, now I can express this as rational as a rational exponent. So I can now one thing about 64, I can I can express 64 as a power. If you break down 64, I'm using a factor tree. Let me do it over here. Take down 64, take out 2, you get 32, take out 2, you get um, 16, 2, 8, and then 2, 4, and then that's 2, 2. All right, so you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 64 is basically. 2 to the 6th power, okay? So we're going to have 2 to the 6th power times a to the 5th, b to the 6th, raised to the 1 sixth, one third, I'm sorry. So expressing a radicand as a rational exponent. Now I'm going to use the power of a product of powers property. What I'll simply do is I will distribute this power to these powers here. So 6 over 1, 5 over 1, 6 over 1, and then just distribute one third to all these three powers that you have here. Okay, so that gives us <coughs> 2 to the 6 over 3, a to the 5 thirds, b to the 6 over 3. Okay, and then if we simplify, we're going to have uh, 2 to the 6 over 3 is 2. And then one interesting thing about a is that it doesn't simplify, so we have to write it as a mixed number, 1 over 2. So 3 goes into 5 once, remainder 2, and then b to the second power. Okay, now this is a very unique situation because this um, 2 third right here is a radicand. Okay, any fractional exponent can be expressed using a radicand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together all the exponents that are whole numbers. So 2 square 
a to the first, I took the whole number part of one and a two third, and then b square. Now we now have the a to the two third, the fractional piece right here. Now why did I do that? When you express it as an improper fraction and separate the, the, the proper fraction, the proper fraction can be written as a radicand. Okay, so what is that going to be? This is going to be the third root of a square. All right, so if we simplify our answer, we'll have two square, which is four. A to the first power is just a times b square times the third root of the square. Uh, third root of a square. Okay, so our answer for number um, 16 is option number one. Let's take a look at it. Option number one right there. All right, let's take a look at problem 17. It says, what is the product of the roots of 4x squared? minus 5x equals 3. So one thing you want to note is that um, <coughs> the quadratic formula can always be used to find the roots of a quadratic equation. Sometimes you might try to, uh, a, a quadratic equation uh, might involve a prime expression that cannot be factored by um, group in, so you have to resort to either completing the square or the quadratic formula, but they're the same. The quadratic formula is just a condensed version of completing the square. That algorithm always works, okay? So in this problem, these are the steps we're going to use. First of all, we'll write this equation in standard form. That's really important. And find the roots. Then after finding the roots, note we are to find the product, okay? We'll just multiply the two roots that um, we got from our from step one. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, put this in standard form. The original equation is 4x squared minus 5x equals 3. So we'll simply subtract 3 from both sides, and that gives us 4x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. Powers in descending order equal to zero. That's a standard form. Now let's see if we can factor this. <coughs> so I like to use the um, AC method or the X uh, game. So AC goes on top, B goes on the bottom. AC is negative 12 and B, uh, B is negative 5. Now what combination of... Uh, Numbers that multiply to give you 12 gives you negative 5. We have 1, 12, which doesn't work, 6, 2, and 4, 3. None of them yield negative 5. So this expression is prime. You cannot solve by factoring. You have to use the quadratic formula now. Okay, so let's refresh our memory as to what the quadratic formula is. A quadratic formula. We learned this in Algebra 1, is uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and that entire expression divided by 2a, okay? All right, so in this problem, a is 4, b is negative 5, and c is negative 3. You have to be really careful with the signs when using the quadratic formula. Now we'll just plug in these values into the quadratic formula and we'll get x equals um, negative, uh, negative 5 plus or minus the square root <coughs> of b square, which is negative 5 square minus 4 AC uh, divided by 2A. The entire expression will be divided by 2A, okay? So divided by 2A. Now, one thing you want a good practice to have when using the quadratic formula is always using parentheses. It protects you from making errors associated with signs and um, 
order of operations. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we have that there substituted nicely. So let's simplify using the order of operations. Um, negative 5 times negative 5 is just 5 plus or minus the square, the square root of negative 5 squared is 25. 4 times 4 is 16 times 3 is 48 times negative 3 is negative 48 and then the opposite of negative 48 is positive 48. Okay, so we have that divided by 2 times 4, which is 8. And then when we simplify further, we have 5 plus or minus the square root of 73 divided by 8. Okay, so this number can be broken down. So we'll just uh, go ahead and write down what our roots are. Okay, so what are our roots? <coughs> Our two roots are what you get when you apply the plus or minus component. So we have 5 minus root 73 over 8. That's the first root, the smaller of the two, and 5 plus root 73 over 8. All right, so there goes your roots. So what are we going to do next? We were asked to find the product of the roots, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we, uh, we have 5 minus root three, 73 uh, divided by 8. We're going to multiply this by um, 5 plus root 73 over 8. So how do you multiply fractions? You just multiply uh, across or horizontally, okay? So... We we'll multiply numerator and a denominator. Multiplying the denominator is straightforward. You just go 8 times 8, which gives you 64. But we have um, a real number and a radical, a whole number, <coughs> an integer and a radical um, on the, in the numerator. So what we're going to basically have to do here is distribute. Okay, so it's as though you're foiling a binomial expression, that's the same idea here. So we're going to multiply 5 times 5, that's the, real, um, the integer times the integer, and then 5 times the radical. And then after doing that, the, this negative radical piece right here, we'll distribute that negative rad 73 to the 5, and then the negative rad 73 to the positive rad 73. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times positive root 73 is plus 5 rad 73. Negative rad 73 times 5 is negative 5 rad 73. Negative rad 73 times positive rad 73 is negative rad 73 square. Okay? And then the denominator is pretty straightforward. You're multiplying... Um, two integers, 8 times 8 is simply 64. Now one nice thing about this is um, the, the middle terms add up to 0, so that drops off. And we have 25 uh, minus the square root of 73 squared. Square and square roots are inverse operations, so they cancel each other out. You're left with 73 over 64. Okay. And then when you subtract the numerator, you have negative 48 over 64. The greatest common factor here is 16. So you divide the numerator and the denominator by the GCF just to reduce it. And you end up with negative 3 over 4. Okay, so that's your final answer. Our answer is option number 3. All right. Okay, let's move right along. All right, let's take a look at problem number 18. It reads, how many different 11-letter arrangements are possible using the letters in the word arrangement? So just a few things to note is that whenever you're arranging letters of an alphabet, you want to pay close attention to the alphabets that repeat. Okay, because we're going to use a special kind of permutation formula to 
computes the total possible arrangement of letters. So let's take a look at the steps. Um, <clears throat> first of all, you're going to count the total number of letters. They already provided that for us, notice, convenient. And the number of times repeated letters occur. So how many, how many times are certain letters repeated? That's where you want to pay close attention to, okay? And then after that, you plug um, your values into the um, permutations with repetitions formula, okay? So that's um, n factorial divided by r factorial, s factorial, t factorial, and on, where you have total number of um, elements, n, and then r are alike, s are alike, and then t are alike, okay? So that's the formula we're going to be using here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get started with the problem. So first thing we're going to do is let's count the total number of letters. We know that um, we have a total of 11 letters, okay? So um, what does that tell us? If we have a total of 11 letters, um, that's basically our value for n. The total goes on top, okay? Now let's take a look at the repetitions. Those are the ones that will go on the bottom repetitions. All right, so we have total repetitions. Now let's go to the word arrangement. I'm going to write the word over here. Let me try and make sure I spell it correctly. Arrangement. Okay, so I don't care for words, letters that don't repeat that. That doesn't count because uh, they are just basically one factorial, which um equals one and has no impact on the resulting answer, okay? So let's start with A. We have one, two. We have two A's, so two A's. So that is going to be our R, since it repeats. Uh, let's see what else. Take a look at R. We have one, two, we have two R's. Okay, I have an R here and an R here. So two R's, two uppercase R's. That's going to be our S. Okay, what next? N, we have one, two. We have two N's. So let's put that down. We have two N's. That's going to be our, you know what that is? T, right? R is T. Now there's just one G, so let's just cross that out. All right, let's take a look at E. Oh, we have two E's there, so we have an E and an E, so we have two E's in arrangement, so that's going to be our RSTU. And then M, we have only one M that doesn't count, and one T that doesn't count. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it into the formula. The formula that we're going to use, number of arrangements, is number of arrangements in the word arrangement interesting is um going to be n factorial divided by the repetitions number of repetitions we have r s t u okay so that's what we're using for this problem remember total goes on top repetitions on the bottom so that's going to give us um 11 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Uh, you just plug that um, in your calculator and you're going to get uh, 2,494,800 and that is uh, option number one. Okay, so that's that. All right, let's take a look at problem number uh, 19. It says, what is the third term in the expansion of 2x minus 3 raised to the fifth power? Now, there are uh, three different ways we can solve this problem. We can multiply it out five times, which is uh, unnecessary. Um, or we can use the binomial theorem or Pascal's triangle. Now, one thing you want to note is that Pascal's triangle is a quick way to um, find the coefficient of the binomial expansion of the terms. For example, if you have 6 to power 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 lower powers, you can just 
easily used by the Pascal's triangle. For higher powers like 50 or things like that, just use the binomial theorem, okay? So the steps we're going to use is we're going to set up Pascal's triangle all the way to the fifth row. And then we're going to determine the coefficient that's applicable. And then we're going to um, basically find out what the value of the term is, okay? So let's see, Pascal's triangle to the fifth <coughs> row. So this is row number one. And then we have one, 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 two, one. So this is row one. This is, um, actually this is row zero. Row zero, row one, row two, and then row three, one, three, three, one, and then one, four, six, four, one, and then uh, lastly, one, five, ten, ten, five, one. All right. So what one thing to remember when you're dealing with Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem is that you always start from r equals zero. Okay. You always start from r equals zero. 0th row all the way to the 5th row, so we need the 5th row, this right here, <coughs> is row 5. Why are we using um, the 5th row? We're using the 5th row because the problem has a 5th power, okay? So it's 2x minus 3 raised to the 5th power, so that's what tells you how many rows to go. All right, <coughs> now this is the first term, second term, third term. This is what we're looking for here third term, this is what we're going to extract, third term. You can also compute this by using combination formula, but this is pretty easy, so let's just stick with it. All right, now let's let's go ahead and set it up. I'm going to take these values and orient them vertically. So we have 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, one okay but this is row this is the first term second term third term this is one we care about okay that's the third term so uh now we have we, we have we're gonna put n here let's change the color so n is always the same no it's not it decreases so n starts n is the um, starts from the power of the exponent, and then r starts from 0, as we have over here, okay? So what we're multiplying is 2x minus 3, so we have 2x minus 3. We're going to split it in half, okay? We're going to separate them, we're going to take 2x, and then we're going to take negative 3. And then now we're going to have 2x and it will start from 5, so 2x to the 5th, and then we take negative 3, and then this r will start from 0. Now what happens is that n will, dis will decrease, it will go from 5 all the way to 0, and as n is decreasing, r will be increasing. It will go from 0 to 5, just as we did over here, okay? So <clears throat> we have 2x, 2x, 2x. I'm going to stop here because we don't need anything more than the third term. Negative 3, negative 3. Now take a look at this. 5, 4, 3. What's going to happen here? 0, 1, 2. The powers always add up to 5. 5 plus 0, 5, 4 plus 1, 5, 3 plus 2, 5. Okay, so keep that in mind. So if we simply expand this uh, situation right here, expand this, that will give us our third term. Okay, so let's go ahead and do and do that. So we have um, 10 times, now 2x to the third is, you want to raise 2 to the third power and x to the third power. Negative 3 squared is positive 9, because 3 times 3 is 9. So you have to be really careful with the sign here, okay? Now, 2 to the third is 8. 8 times 9 is 72 times 10 is 720. And then um, x to the third. All right, so that's the third term. Answer is option number 1. So don't forget that r always starts from 0. 
and goes all, all the way to 5 and n starts from 5 and descends all the way to 0. Okay, so that's that. All right, let's take a look at problem number 20. It reads, angle theta is in standard position and negative 4, 0 is a point on the terminal side of theta. What is the value of secant theta? So one thing you want to note in this problem is that secant is the reciprocal of cosine and not sine. Okay, most students, when they hear the word secant starting with F, S, they automatically associate it with sine. That's not the case. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, now, um, in order to do this problem, these are the steps we're going to use. We're going to find x, y, and r, write down the appropriate formula, and then substitute the values um, that we need into the formula, and then evaluate. Okay? All right, so what is x, y, and r? Um, <clears throat> first thing you want to note um, is that we have the point negative 4, comma, 0. So automatically, x is equal to negative 4, the x-coordinate, and y is equal to 0. So what is r? Well, you are going to use the Pythagorean theorem here. The formula is r square is equal to x square plus y square. Okay? So that's what how you find r. So r square is negative 4 square plus 0 square. All right? r square is negative 4 square, 16 plus 0 square. So if you take the square root of both sides, r is 4. Okay, so r is 4. Now, what? why do we need x, y, and r? Well, let's write down the formulas so that you can see the importance of having these. Um, these are the formulas right here. We're just going to use one of them. Sine theta is y over r. Cosine theta is x over r. These are the ratios you need to have mastered in order to be able to solve this problem. And tan theta is independent of r. It's y over x. So with these three identities or these three ratios, I can determine what uh, the reciprocal tree identities are. So sine goes with what? Secant or cosecant? Sine goes with cosecant, okay? S goes with C, so that's R over Y. Cosine goes with secant. Secant theta is R over X. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tan, and that is X over Y. Okay? So what are we using in this problem? In this problem, we are using secant. That's what we're looking for. So secant is R over X. So let's write that down, secant theta is r over x, r is 4, x is negative 4, so we have 4 over negative 4, and our final answer is negative 1. Option number 2, okay, that's our final answer, option 2. So it's very beneficial to have this formula um, committed to memory, and then you can apply it uh, to these problems. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. I will appreciate your feedback. Um, if you found this tutorial beneficial or helpful to you, please give us a thumbs up. We'll um, appreciate the positive feedback. Um, if you have any questions about this or any questions on the um, Algebra 2 trig regions, um, just post the, your question um, on the comment section below. And we'll be glad to um, address it as soon as possible. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you get immediate updates to um, the next installment of this review series. More clips can be found on mathgutserve.com on the test prep. There you gain access to past exams and also our cool interactive practice test. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.